Hello, this is Mr. Craig, and with this video I want to talk about writing molecular compounds. Now when you use the term molecular, you're referring to a nonmetal with a nonmetal. If you want to go over the same type of problems that I'm going to show on the overhead, um, I highly recommend that you go to www.avon-chemistry.com. Come down here to the general chemistry topics notes, click on that link, And then, from there, click on First Semester. And then from there, scroll down until you get to Chemical Formulas Nomenclature. Okay, so on the Chemical Formulas Nomenclature, click on that. And from here, we're actually going to click on the first link right here, naming compounds, binary compounds. And I apologize for all the extra letters on there. That's my HTML. Something happened with the website. So go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> and it'll give you this worksheet where it says binary molecular, again, nonmetal with nonmetal, compounds homework. So I'm going to go to that. Okay, before we do anything, hopefully on your periodic table, and I did this in an earlier video, and if you haven't had a chance to look at that earlier video, it was mainly for ionic compounds, this is one thing I want you to do to your periodic table. Place a dot smack dab in the middle of the symbol for carbon. Place another dot right in the middle of the symbol for fluorine. And then place a third dot right in the middle of the symbol for iodine. And then neatly connect the dots to form a nice triangle. What you just created is the non-metal triangle. In other words, the, the elements that are on the border of the triangle and in the triangle are the non-metals that we're going to focus on for naming molecular compounds. Now, there are a few exceptions. Xenon and radon may form some compounds, but for the most part, these non-metals or the noble gases don't. So these are the ones that we're actually focusing on. Now, you'll also notice that I have the charges above we don't care about charges when we have a nonmetal with a nonmetal. So charges and everything you learned about ionic, if you've learned about ionic already, are out the window. No charges when we talk about molecular compounds. So that's the first rule. The second thing is making sure that you know what the Greek prefixes are. Because since we're not using charges, we have to have some system in which we name these. So the system that we'll use to name these compounds is Greek prefixes. So whenever we do anything with Greek prefixes, we always want to, here, let's pull this back up. Okay. Um, if you have a single representative within a compound, or you have one, it's called mono. And that's our Greek prefix, mono. If you have two, then you have di. Three is tri, four is tetra, and if you've ever played the game Tetris, it's an older game from uh, the late 80s, early 90s, that's where we get tetra, because it's a four block game. Uh, so four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, like a hexagon. Seven is hepta, so hepta, and eight is octa, and in general chem, I usually don't go beyond that, but some do, so if you do have to know above that, usually go up to ten, and that's the most. Nine is nano, and ten is deca, okay? so. Those are your Greek prefixes, and we're going to use those when naming molecular compounds or nonmetal with nonmetal. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to memorize these. You have to know 
the Greek prefixes. So mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, and nano, and then deca. Now I, again, in general chem, when I teach general chem, I stop at octa. But you might have a teacher that gives you nine or ten, and that's fine. All right, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and go to the, the worksheet that I had on the website. Okay. So looking at this, let me load up a little bit more. All right, so it wants us to name the binary molecular compounds. And again, you should recognize that you actually have a molecular compound because when you look on the periodic table, you look at your elements, you have P and Cl. Both of those elements are within your nonmetal the nonmetal triangle. So phosphorus and chlorine, there's phosphorus and chlorine. So that's one thing. Always have your periodic table out whenever you're writing these formulas or naming these formulas. It's always a good idea. But again, we don't care about charges when we talk about molecular compounds, okay? So looking at the first one, PCL5, one thing that I didn't mention, sorry about that, one, the only time that we ever use the prefix mono is on the second element, okay? So if I just have one representative and it starts with one representative of that element, we never use mono. And I'll give you a great example. In other words, I'd be willing to bet that most of you can name what this is. And that's always a good one to start with. Here we have a carbon. Here we have an oxygen. Okay? And I'll go through the rules for this one. So C and O. So we know that the C is carbon. We know that O is oxygen. Okay? But we don't call this carbon-oxygen. If you've looked at the ionic compound naming uh, video, what do we do with the second element in this? That's right, we drop the last syllable, or in some cases, last two syllables, and add IDE. So in this case here, we're going to drop the E gen, the oxy gen. We're going to get rid of the E gen, and we're going to add IDE to this. So we'll always add the ending IDE to any of the second element. So we now have oxide. Okay. So now we've got, for CO, we've got carbon oxide. Since we don't care about charges, we have to be able to tell everybody else in the chemistry world how many of each of these we have. Okay. If I had, say, a subscript 2 or 3 or 4 on here, I would have to put a prefix in front of the carbon. However, since the standard procedure for naming compounds or molecular compounds is if you have one representative, we never use mono on the first element. However, mono is reserved for the second element. However, we can use any of the prefixes for any of the elements other than mono. So in this case here, we have carbon, and we're going to leave it as carbon. And then for the oxygen, since we have one representative, now we get to use that Greek prefix and say mono, okay? And I always hyphenate. Hyphenating, especially where you're at right now, you're learning, and you might say, well, do I have two vowels in a row? If you hyphenate, nobody's ever going to give you any trouble. So mono oxide, okay? So this CO, okay, the CO is carbon monoxide, okay? We don't ever want to have that. Uh, or inhale that type of gas, okay? Carbon monoxide. Let's go to the other one. So again, what we're looking at is you have your first element, you're going to name it as is. If you have more than one, then you're going to put your Greek prefix in the front of it. So if I had four carbons on here, I'd go tetra carbon, and let's say we just had one oxygen here, we'd go monoxide. So tetra carbon monoxide, okay? Pretty cool. All right, let's look at the first example that I have on here. So I've got my phosphorus, so I'm going to write out phosphorus. And since I only have one representative, I'm not going to worry about putting a Greek prefix on that. So phosphorus, whoops, phosphorus. And then the chlorine, we have five chlorines. So what's the prefix for five? Okay, prefix for five is penta, and you want to have that memorized. So penta, and if you want to hyphenate that, that's fine. And since we have chlorine, we're going to get rid of the 
the ending on the I-N-E and add I-D-E, so it'll be pentachloride. Okay, so phosphorus pentachloride. Okay, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Here, let's get this over just a little so you guys can still see everything. All right, SiO2. SiO2, silicon's one of those that are kind of outside the border, but uh, if you look on your periodic table, okay, since we have silicon here and it's kind of touching, we'll treat it as a non-metal. So silicon's a non-metal, but more importantly, how many silicons do we have in this formula? We have one, so we're not going to use a Greek prefix in front of that, so we'll go silicon, and then we have oxygen, so we're going to drop the last syllable of the E-gen and put I, so we have an oxide, but since we have two, that's dioxide. So dioxide. So silicon dioxide. Looking at number three, we have carbon and selenium. Okay. So obviously carbon is in the mix, and then selenium's down here. And this is one of those that you have to kind of feel out to make it sound right. So since we have one carbon, we're just going to call it carbon. Oop, and if I could spell, we'd be in good shape. Carbon, and since there's two of those, we're going to go di. And you're going to drop the last syllable, selenium, so selenide. Okay. Uh, looking at number four. Ooh, here we go. Now we finally got something going on here. So we have a subscript for our sulfur. So that's going to be tetra. Okay. Again, remember, tetra represents for four. Four represent, tetra represents four. And then we're going to have tetra sulfur. And then we have two nitrogens, so dinitride. Okay, so nitrogen, get rid of the ogen and put tride, nitride. And it just, it takes a little bit to hear it. Okay, so tetra sulfur dinitride. Isn't that cool? Number five. We have one carbon, so just carbon, and then we have how many chlorines there? That's right, we have four of those, so tetra, and chlorine, drop the I-N-E and add I-D-E, so chloride. So carbon tetrachloride. And again, we're not worrying about charges on here. And that's the beautiful thing about this, because with ionic compounds, we were focused on the charges, making sure the algebraic sum equals zero. With these, the Greek prefixes tell us how many of those elements we should have in the formula. So we don't care about charges. We're never going to balance charges when you have molecular compounds or nonmetals with nonmetals. Okay? All right, let's look at number six. Okay? We have sulfur. So we only have one of those, so just write sulfur. And we have four, so that means tetra. And fluorine, fluoride. Okay, so fluoride. Number seven, what is B? Where is B? Okay, B is also kind of out of that little realm there, but since it's treated as a non-metal in this case, We'll still use it. So B is boron. Oop, boron. And the I is iodine, so get rid of the I and add iod, so iodide. But it's tri iodide. Okay. Boron tri iodide. All right, number eight. And try a couple of these on your own. In other words, pause the video, give it a shot. Hopefully you recognize what CO2 is. So carbon, and since we have two oxygens, di oxide. And then looking at NO2, we have nitrogen. Again, we don't do anything to the first element's name. We leave it as is. The only thing that we're going to do to it, if it has a subscript, is give it a Greek prefix. And then nitrogen, since there's two oxygens, dioxide. And then the last one here, P2O5. 
So we have diphosphorus, and what is it, five? So penta, penta oxide. Okay. Diphosphorus penta oxide. Isn't that easy? We like that. All right, now let's go and focus on going from the names to the formula. And I think this is a lot easier than actually writing it out. So here we have chlorine dioxide. Well, chlorine, a Cl, dioxide means you have two oxygens, O2. Looking at dichlorine monoxide, okay, so we have our prefix di and mono there. So we have two chlorines and one oxygen. Diphosphorus, there's our di, there's our tetraoxide, diphosphorus tetraoxide, so P2O4. Again, we're not focused on charges here. We're only looking at the Greek prefixes. Okay, Xenon, with no prefix, so that just means we have one of those. Uh, tetrachloride, so chlorine with four. And then we have sulfur trioxide, so again, no Greek prefix on the sulfur. The trioxide, so that means we have three oxygens. Antimony, ooh, you guys remember what the symbol for antimony is? Actually, antimony is right there. Oops, it's on the other side, but it could be treated as a non-metal in some cases. We'll assume that it is. So antimony, and here's an easy way to remember antimony. Antimony rhymes with alimony. And if you have to pay alimony, then you have to pay that son of a... Yeah, I'll let you fill it in. Okay? All right. So SB, since there's no Greek prefix, and then tribromide, so that means we have three bromines. And then phosphorus pentaoxide. So phosphorus, one of those, and the penta means that we have five chlorines. I think we had that earlier. Yep. And then we have boron trifluoride. So one boron, and then the fluorine, we have three. Okay. Actually, naming nonmetals with nonmetals is rather easy as long as you understand the Greek prefixes. And don't worry about charges. Make sure that you're not, if you don't have a metal, then you never worry about charges. If you have a metal, you are, you're worried about charges. But when we look at all of these, these are nonmetals with nonmetals. So just write the Greek prefixes, still drop the last syllable, the last two syllables in IDE, and I'm sorry, in the element, and then add IDE. Hope this video has helped.